The next two are by Evan Patton, who's the uh, head of the engineering team at App Inventor. Um, and his first talk is on handling very large workspaces. Yes, so Eric emailed me to ask me if I would be willing to give some talks uh, here at the summit. And uh, I said, okay, yeah, I could do one on really big workspaces because we have some projects that are like 10,000 blocks. And we've had to do a lot of optimizations to make that work reasonably well. And then uh, I went and I actually looked and I did not have a 10,000 block project. So uh, if you saw in the schedule, it, the title was 10,000 blocks. But if you saw at the top of the agenda, it was not because uh, <laughs> I realized my mistake. So I'm just going to call my talk Exploring Blockly Performance uh, in Case Studies in MIT App Inventor. So some of these may or may not apply to your own projects. Um, you know, a lot of examples tend to be smaller workspaces, and so most of the optimizations that we've done may not really be useful for you. Uh, but if you are looking to build a system that is being used by people who are building really complicated pieces of software with Blockly, then, you know, potentially some of this will be useful for you. Okay, so I just wanted to give a little bit of App Inventor history. So who here is aware of App Inventor? A number of you are. Oh, pretty much everybody. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I guess I'll do the history very quickly. So App Inventor started at Google in 2009 as part of Google Labs. Um, and then a number actually like Neil, uh, Mark is here, maybe a couple others were part of that team. Um, it was moved out to MIT in 2011 when Google shut down Google Labs. Uh, but it was also the inspiration for Blockly because if you've ever seen the original App Inventor Blocks editor, it is um, a little bit more complicated than what you can do today. Uh, it required a separate Java process to run on your computer to both interact with Android phone and to render the blocks. And now it's all done in JavaScript. So, um, you know, in a way, we sort of catalyzed the need for Blockly. Uh, our mission is primarily education. People use App Inventor to build real apps that they publish in the Google Play Store, uh, but that is not really our primary objective. Our primary objective is to help people learn about computer science um, through app build. And over the weekend, we just had our 10 millionth user sign up. So we're really excited about that. And overall, we've, thank you. We've had 42 million projects created with App Inventor. Um, and as of uh, earlier this week, we had 623,000 uh, active users. That typically peaks around April and May when competitions like Technovation are happening. We usually hit a little over a million users a month. So we have a lot of people using App Inventor, and we're interested in performance. And why can I not go to the next slide? So people build big apps with App Inventor. Um, so the largest are on the order of 1K blocks. I'm going to show data a little bit later in this presentation, where we'll actually see some of those numbers. Um, but you know, these are not necessarily simple applications. They're actually quite complicated. Um, and when you get to that size, there are some interesting challenges. So the first is that dragging tends to be kind of slow, either when you're dragging the workspace or when you're dragging individual blocks. Uh, sometimes collapse and expand is kind of slow. Uh, we do have features for expanding all and collapsing all the blocks. In fact, we find that there are some performance benefits to keeping blocks collapsed, which a lot of our users tend to end up doing. Uh, and then, of course, arranging blocks is slow. So if you want to reorganize your code for some reason, um, then uh, often people do this to do a printout or something because uh, things like cleanup blocks will put everything in a nice vertical linear fashion uh, for printing. And so um, sometimes that can also be slow. And so I, we have a random sample of projects that I pulled out. And so this is kind of the breakdown. If you aggregate a project count by number of blocks on the bottom, you have number of blocks going up towards a little over uh, 1,300. And then on the y-axis, you've got number of projects in the data set with that many blocks. And so you get the sort of typical power law curve. But if you actually try to then represent that as a, OK. <laughs> so on my screen, there is that. Oh, there it goes. Um, there is this. And you'll see, as a power law, if you do the log on both of those axes, what normally you would expect is kind of a straight line, but it starts to really dip off around 300 or so blocks, right? So for some reason, there is a lot of significant resistance to people building projects with more than 300 blocks. And performance is one of those reasons. There are others 
which involve how App Inventor is designed that I won't uh, go into. So a couple caveats. First, we have an older version of Blockly. So some of these performance numbers may not reflect changes to Blockly as of late. Uh, and two things that we're really interested in and how it's going to affect the numbers are the new rendering pipeline and how is that going to change performance of our rendering system and also how uh, the connection database is being changed. Um, and I saw Becca put in a couple things about that. So um, take some of the numbers I'm saying with a grain of salt because you know, in a couple of weeks, they might all be different. So, okay. So we have two different methods that we use internally for measuring these things. So one of these is we have a package we call Blockly Instrumentation, which was written by uh, Professor Lynn Turbeck at Wellesley College. Uh, and it allows us to basically measure a whole suite of different features of App Inventor uh, using various debugging flags. So um, we can collect performance measurements and all sorts of stuff. Uh, using this, and it has flags for turning on certain optimizations that we use. Um, yeah, I covered all that. Good. The second that we use is the browser dev tool. So if you open your browser dev tools in Chrome, you can hit the record button from the performance panel. And then when you do and you collect your data, Chrome will give you this matrix looking thing. Uh, and so what you have is basically a breakdown of all of the different function calls and everything that's happening when uh, your block workspace is being rendered. And so this is actually, I can't quite read it, but it's over the course of about three seconds, all of this data gets generated. So uh, there's quite a lot of information here. Of course, measuring the performance does affect how fast it actually runs. So things are always a little bit slower, but it's pretty good metric for how uh, things are changing as you make changes to how Blockly is working. So the first optimization that I want to talk about is what we call render here, render down, um, which is our replacement for the normal rendering mechanism that Blockly does. And so one observation that we've noticed is a lot of people collapse their blocks. And one of the benefits of collapsing blocks is there's a whole lot less you have to draw. So if we know that we can do an optimization here where if we're collapsed, we don't have to do any further calculations. Again, I don't know how this is going to be affected by the uh, stuff that Rachel presented this morning, but potentially we can save a lot of computation time. Um, we're not touching the DOM as much, which means that there's fewer slow operations that are occurring. Um, and then basically the two operations are we render here, which is draw the current block, or we render down, which is draw my descendant blocks. And we can skip that last step in a, a case of collapse blocks. So here's kind of what you can get. Uh, so I loaded up four different projects. Um, the first has, or the first two actually have the same number of total blocks, except one, uh, the blue one, is uh, only 100 top level blocks. And the orange one, I basically took the blue one and disassembled the entire thing, and it has 1,200 top level blocks. Uh, and then the other two are um, 1,300 and 900 blocks, respectively. And so on the left, you have the Blockly render performance. And then on the right, you have what, the render down performance. And so what we can see is that uh, whether you're expanded or collapsed, we can actually still get about uh, four times the, the performance gains uh, using the render down mechanism. And uh, it, the important thing here for us is that we want to try to get it at least to under a millisecond per block, which is this graph. Um, where you know, if you've got a thousand blocks and you're spending a millisecond per block, that's a whole second the user has to wait for a draw operation to happen. Uh, and if we want to get to 10,000 blocks someday, that means we have to get it down to uh, 0.1 milliseconds, right? So uh, we still have a ways to go. So we're not quite at the stage yet where we think we'll have performant workspaces with 10,000 blocks, but we are slowly moving in that direction. The next change that we did was around uh, event optimization. So um, there was this comment, and this was talked about actually at last year's Blockly Summit, merge duplicates O of n squared by n should be very small. Uh, and what would happen is people would organize their workspaces. And if you've got 100 blocks or 1,000 blocks, that means that you don't quite have such a small n anymore. And so even with even just 100 top level blocks, you're still talking two orders of magnitude more work than if you could do it in linear time. Uh, so we actually rewrote that algorithm 
to be linear, and that actually is already in Blockly Core. So if you're using a new version of Blockly, you've got that already. So the second we saw is in the connection database, where we had a lot of issues with this. So the invariant that the connection database tries to manage is that all of the connections are sorted by Y position and then the X position, so that when you're dragging, Blockly can quickly look up where to uh, play, uh, are there nearby connections to connect to. Um, and the way this is normally achieved to keep this sorted is uh, Blockly removes and then re-adds the connections. I don't know if that's true as of your recent changes, Becca, but it might still be. Of course, the problem is, is if we start moving a whole stack or if we, again, try to reorganize the entire workspace uh, in, as a single operation, then you're moving all of the connections at once, which if, for those of you who are computer scientists and remember back to your, you know, probably freshman or sophomore computer science courses, this is basically insertion sort, which is O of n squared. So we introduced a new mechanism in App Inventor for these types of operations where we can set a flag saying we're about to do a bulk update of the workspace, do not change the database at all. And then at the end, we use the JavaScript array sort function, which is running in native code and will run in O and log N. And so we can reduce the running time of this operation from minutes down to seconds for really large workspaces. And then the last piece is the mutator. So for those of you who don't use mutators, this will not affect you. Uh, but one of the App Inventor users <laughs> had a create a list block with over 50 connections in it. And whenever he opened the mutator, uh, it would actually take like a minute to, to draw for some reason. Uh, we, <laughs> and we're not sure why this originally was. We had to do a lot of uh, digging into it, but there was this subtle O of n squared performance thing that we managed to find. Um, I don't know if it's still in Blockly, but uh, it was definitely a problem for when you had lots of mutations. And so we, again, uh, rewrote this to use a linear approach for using our render here mechanism. So we were able to drastically reduce the amount of time it took to render the mutator workspace. So just a couple takeaways. See what your users actually do, uh, because it might surprise you. One thing I didn't mention earlier with the workspace rendering was that one person put like thousands and thousands of blocks into the backpack, which is a kind of like the trash can feature that was demoed earlier where you can store your blocks for later use. And um, every time they open the backpack, it would take seconds to render because it was you know, doing this and they just stored thousands and thousands of blocks in there. I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but they, they did, you know? <laughs> um, you don't know what you don't measure. So using the dev tools or using some sort of instrumentation mechanism uh, can really give you a lot of insight into your, how your application's working and where the bottlenecks are. And we're not quite at 10,000 blocks yet, but I expect as we continue to make improvements to App Inventor and as people want to build more sophisticated applications, we'll be getting there probably in the next couple of years. So that's the end of the first talk. Are there any questions? Yes, Neil. Uh, some of them, yes, we have. Um, a lot of times, so actually, uh, so Lynn has a great paper on this that one of his students and he worked on, which is uh, trying to detect patterns of block reuse to basically infer when you could, say, use a loop or a procedure to simplify the structure of the program. Uh, and in fact, there are quite a number of cases, both in novice users and in power users of App Inventor, where they don't necessarily take an optimal path. They build something that copies a lot of code and, and things like that. Um, and we think the reason for that is basically because it's so easy to hit Command C, Command V to copy a bunch of blocks uh, versus actually having to think through and restructure your code. So one of the, the features we recently added to App Inventor is generic event handlers, because it used to be the case you have to have the same event handler for every, so uh, one example was a, um, breakout game. So somebody made the game breakout, you got a bunch of bricks and you got a ball and it's got to bounce. And they had a collision handler for when the ball hit every single block. But that was a design decision in App Inventor that it was done that way. So uh, we implemented generic event handlers. So now that 30 plus set of blocks can be reduced down to a single block because you have this way of saying for any block that I hit, um, you know, run this code. So there are definitely reasons for having such large projects 
Uh, like I said, they, they're often also because of design decisions in App Inventor that we're working to improve. So, um, but yeah, yeah, people do do that, yes. Most, most likely, yes. And we've come up, ah, perfect segue, because Rachel asked me to demo something for you. So <laughs> let me do that. Um, we added a feature recently as well to App Inventor, but I'm bringing up a test server just because it has something else that's really nice for me to demo with. Um, so we added this feature recently to allow for people to export blocks as PNG files. Uh, we've always, for about five years now, I think four or five years, we've had the ability to export the workspace um, as a set of blocks. Uh, but now you can also do it for individual blocks where you can right click and there's this download blocks as PNG feature, which allows you to just click on it and you get an image. And then the other thing, which I don't know if it works on a Chromebook, but I'll try it, is that you can drag these into App Inventor and it will put them back into your workspace. And so we've been working on things like how can we make the documentation better? So for those of you building tools with Blockly, this is kind of a cool thing. You can say, oh, there's this feature, make generic, which was about the generic event handlers I just talked about where you get some documentation, which, uh, and then I can say, oh, there's some information here. And oh, these blocks are interesting. I can actually just drag these into App Inventor and instantiate them into my program. And so it's a great way for you to like build documentation and things like that, that can be pulled right into your application. Um, and this, again, is one of these things where we're making it really easy for people to be able to copy and paste stuff, because now it's just a picture you can put on a website and drag into your app. Um, but at the same time, we are also thinking about, can we make more sophisticated tools to inform people when they're doing this and say like, oh, you know, that's kind of an anti-pattern. You should consider doing something else instead to make them also think more abstractly about how to apply what they're learning to their programs, so, um, but that is kind of future work that we're in the process of setting up now.